Hello and welcome to the video. Today is a big day. If you are a Walksdale fan or if you've been looking at the system or if you've heard the rumours that there was a new goggle on the way, there absolutely is. And this is it. This is the new Walksdale Goggle X that has been released today. Now I've only had it about a week and unfortunately with the weather here in the UK, with the wind and the rain and the generally terrible flying conditions, I've only been able to get a couple of flights on this. So I'm not calling this video a review by any stretch of the imagination. I want to put a lot more time and flights through this before I feel I'm in a position to make a review. However, the initial testing has gone very well. The interesting thing is it sounds like Walksnail have been listening to all of the feedback from us as a community. And this is personally one of the things that I like about Walksnail. They do seem to actually listen to what we as pilots bang on about and say that we want, because they seem to have given us a lot of the stuff that we actually want. On the bottom of here, we have a HDMI in, we have a HDMI out, we have an AV in, we have lots of other pieces, actually, that people have been asking for. Improved fan, which I know lots of people really, really wanted, but it's a very different goggle. If you look at the optics on this, compared to the original V1, you'll be able to see very clearly, this is not just an updated version of the V1 goggles that many of us have been flying with. This is a complete redesign. When I first got wind of this, I did get onto the gang at Fat Shark and ask how much involvement that they had had. Because many of you will know that the version one goggles are pretty much the HDO2 optics with the walk snail system involved. Fat Shark actually designed those version one goggles. But when I asked about these new walk snail goggle X's and how much participation they'd had, it was interesting to get the reply from Fat Shark that they hadn't been involved in these at all. These are walk snail goggles manufactured by other people apart from Fat Shark. And I'm guessing that is why the optics look very much like the optics that you'd find in a modern VR headset versus what you would find in some of the more mature vendors goggle systems. So while I unbox this and show you what it comes in, let's go through some of the key things that's changed. Um, obviously, two of the big ones that lots of people are gonna be very excited about is that it does have a HDMI input and a HDMI output. That means with a HDMI input, you can plug um, your graphics card or the auxiliary output from your laptop into these goggles. And if you're flying a simulator, you can get the experience directly in the screen. And also there's the HDMI output. Now in the version one goggles, that was done via a wacky USB-C adapter cable thing. In this, it's a classic kind of small HDMI cable that you can use with everything else. You'll notice in between the two lenses, there is the sensor. That is the sensor that will turn the displays off when it isn't on your face. And you'll just be able to make out at the sides that there are two grills and those are the cooling, the new cooling fan system, which in the testing I've played with here does seem to work really well. The antennas are kind of the same, left-hand circular polarized. The top and the front is designed to come off. You have the standard joystick, the back, the select button on the side. And then the only other thing really in the case is like a quick start guide, a cloth to keep your lenses clean. And then we also have the power cable, which plugs into the side and can run on your standard batteries that you're gonna have with you at the field. Again, it has a CVBS input and built-in recording module. It has an added protocol, allegedly, for external fixed-wing head tracking. I'm not exactly sure what that is yet. I haven't quite figured that bit out. It has that infrared sensor to turn off the screen in the middle. It has a built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi module. I haven't really got to the bottom of what that's about, but that's nice to see that kind of technology being added. Can also change the color of the lights at the front. You can have three colors currently, or you can turn them off via the menu in the latest firmware. And the sponge mask on these, uh, this was something that delayed them being shipped out to reviewers, has changed significantly. Um, they originally were gonna, I think, ship a couple of different foams. Uh, this is a lovely soft foam, but this one, I'm finding is, is a reasonable fit. However, the cheek pieces um, are not quite proud enough. And interestingly, that was exactly the same on the V1s for me too. Screen resolution on this is a 1080p screen with 1000 FPS and it has the standard IPD adjustment. 
They claim it's got improved optical clarity. Uh, I'm guessing that is because it has this new lens array. Interestingly, the lens array is a little bit further away from my face. Everything seems to be held off my face by the foam a little bit more than the V1s. So whereas with the V1s, my eyelashes will be brushing against the lenses, just like they do with the Fat Shark HDO 2s actually, um, and basically smutzing them up. I'm not finding that that's the situation here. Mine didn't come with an SD card. I've had to pop my one in, and that's been useful for doing the couple of firmware upgrades that have come out uh, during the quick testing phase that I've been playing with here. And then apart from that, I've, everything's just worked. It did come, as you've seen, with the antennas on, but we'll come on to the antennas again in a moment. So what's it been like for me? Well, in practice, it has the same beautiful image as the V1s. There isn't a lot of difference. It's very immersive. The field of view is quite similar. The image is really bright. The optics work nicely. It's the same menu system as before, so there's nothing to relearn. If you've used the V1 or you're watching a video about the V1, guess what? It's gonna work in exactly the same way. A Couple of extra options in the menu in these, things like turning off the IR sensor to detect when your face is actually in the goggle, but also do things like change the color of the LEDs at the front or even turn them off. They're not too heavy. They feel very solid and the plastics on them feel pretty good as well. If this had a DJI logo on the top, I would be quite happy to believe it is a DJI product. I was a bit worried in some of the early kind of leaked photos, it looked a bit cheap and plasticky, but in practice, it definitely doesn't feel that way. There are some nice touches. You've got the HDMI ports at the bottom, which makes a lot of sense. But crucially, the SD card is also here at the bottom as well, which means you can actually get to the thing to pop it out to look at your recorded stuff to save your OSD and your other pieces too. Um, this is a much more sensible place than having it stuck between your eyes in that legacy fat shark position. LEDs at the front are a little bit gimmicky and the plastics around them are absolutely fingerprint magnets but they do show the status so um, when they're booting up they show one color and then we're operating you can have them as a different color again you can change the color within the menus or I just have mine off because I think they look a little bit goofy in fact we're having a discussion with some of my flying buddies about what these things look like and my personal vote is they look like the eyes from the sentries of the robots in the Disney film, The Black Hole. In the testing here, there's only a couple of things that I will draw your attention to. The front is removable, so is the top. I'm not going to force these and break them as I'm gonna be flying with these longer term. The fit is good. Um, again, I'm getting these little light leaks from these kind of cheap pieces. I'm tempted to kind of build these out a little bit with a couple of pieces of foam. That's probably gonna make the fit a little bit better. Um, and a little bit deeper nose. This is a really, really deep nose recess. But the thing is, with the way the foam is, for my face, it isn't a perfect fit right out the box. But then, to be fair, neither was the V1. And then, to be fair, neither was the DJI goggles. The sweet spot for the image with these new optics is a little bit smaller than on the V1s. Um, this tends to be something that these kind of modern uh, VR style optical arrays, you tend to find this. So you have to work a little bit harder to make sure that your eye and your pupil is gonna be exactly in the center of this. So playing with the IPD is gonna be worth it. And you have to make sure your face is fully pushed into the foam in order for you to be able to see all of the screen with each eyes clearly. No power button, as soon as you plug it in, it starts running. What I thought was a power button by the side, which might have been kind of sense thing, it actually isn't. As soon as you plug it on, it starts running. I don't particularly mind that, that's how my other goggles are set up. And I still, after all this time, occasionally will forget to press the power button on the V1s and then pull them down over my eyes and then have to press the power button and wait for them to start. Uh, boot up time on these is about the same as the V1s. The only thing is, is where the V1s, the uh, screens in these take a little bit longer to come on. I don't know whether that's waiting for the IR sensor to detect your face is actually in the goggles. Um, initially, first couple of power on, I was a bit worried that I broke them um, and also doing the updates that something had gone horribly wrong. When you power them up, don't worry about it. They just need 
kind of 20 seconds to get ready to rock. Strap connectors is the last thing I'll draw your attention to. The connections on the side are completely different from the old version, and this strap is only just long enough to go around my head. I haven't got a particularly big head, but if you have a big head, you're probably gonna struggle. So some of the other straps that are available uh, won't go through these smaller connections at the side. I'm probably gonna modify a fat strap or something that I have here in order to swap this one out. This strap actually works fine, but I would like something that is a little bit more, a little bit more give in it because this is quite a tight elastic. So in summary, the initial impressions are very good. This feels like a nice quality goggle. It's not too heavy, but it doesn't feel like it's full of air. The performance and the way it works is nice. But then again, caveat, 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 I've only been able to have a couple of quick flights on these with all the rain and wind that we've had here. The biggest thing for me was that you do need to be a little bit careful getting your eye absolutely bang in the middle of the optics to get in that sweet spot in order to be able to see everything. And you have to really get your face into the goggle in order for you to have that view. I think by the sound of it, Walksnell are potentially gonna bring out other foams uh, and surrounds. And I think that's a good idea to give pilots choice rather than have to start cutting bits of foam to try and make them fit straight out the box. More testing will be done over the next couple of weeks, so do stay tuned. I'm gonna update my walk snail fleet and use these rather than the V1s every time that I fly to really put them through their paces and see how they perform. I'm sure there's gonna be an update or two. I know we've had a couple of beta firmwares that I bet when I checked on the website today, there's now been made gold, which will include all the new features for this and some of the cool stuff for things like the sneaky FPV fonts. The only thing that I'll be doing from here is I won't be using these for antennas for the testing. I like the Menace RC antennas, so I'm gonna be swapping them out for a couple of Menace RC patches and a couple of antennas at the top. I have been flying those antennas on my V1 stuff and had a fantastic experience. And they're also the Menace RC antennas on the far end as well uh, with the system. So I'm just going to be using those on these just so that I get that best performance out of them that I can. So do stay tuned. I'm excited to continue to put these things through its paces, but this is a really great sign that Walksnail are listening. They want to produce products that we're interested in. And I was a party to a little bit of the thinking about the price point here. They've tried to keep the price pretty aggressive, particularly with the other competitive products that are around. Uh, so that's nice that these guys are absolutely keeping it keen. Long may that continue. I'm pretty sure that there's gonna be some more Wartsnell hardware coming out in the next month or so. So do make sure you subscribe to have the bell notification icon turned on, then you won't miss the full flight review of these, but also some of the other stuff that's on the way. Thank you for watching the video. If you watch my videos and find them useful, then please take a moment to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps the channel a lot. If you really like what I'm doing here, you can become a Patreon and support the time I spend helping others and get access to lots of exclusive benefits. Link is in the video description. Remember that all the videos on the channel are organized into playlists, so you can easily use those playlists to find all the videos on a subject that you are interested in. Add Painless360 to your searches on Google and YouTube, and it'll help you find my content for any particular topic. Thanks again for watching, and as always, happy flying.